you guys ready? Yes. Okay. My name is Ann Wakeman, and I had the privilege of being the executive director of Helena Foodshare for 14 years. Uh, I am very thankful to ChallengeHelena.com for inviting me to come here and talk to us a, about a subject that's near and dear to my heart, the issue of childhood hunger. It is a challenge for all of us that we here in our town, in our wider community, the state, and our country have so many hungry kids. And I truly am a person that absolutely loves kids. I have incredible grandkids, neighbor kids, grandnieces and nephews. I have friends' kids. I love to hang out with kids. I love their energy. I love their questions. I love their focus. I love their goofiness. They make my day when I get a chance to actually hang out with them. Our kids are our future, and we count on them to be smart and capable and brave. A number of years ago when I was working at the main pantry for Helena Foodshare, I, we had a counter at the time and, and I'm behind on the staff side of the counter and I see this head barely able to get over the counter standing there so I you know, peer over at this youngster and this was a young girl probably about 11 or so and she looked up at me, looked me straight in the eye and said, can you help me get food? That is a voice I listen to. To this day, I have great respect for her in this very crowded room full of adults to have the courage to step up and say, can you help me? That is not easy for a child to do. It's also not easy for adults to do. I continue to admire her. And I admire the fact that she was able to take food home to her family. I'm aware that each child, each child, needs responsible adults gathered around them to allow them to grow into the capable giving leaders that we need for tomorrow. I've seen the faces of adults who are not well fed. They are drawn, they are tired. And one of the most disheartening things is to see these drawn, tired adults with very energized, happy youngsters because they have, parents have made sure that the children have food and they have denied themselves food. I know that one of the things that makes a parent very happy is if you help their child. That is what makes every parent's heart sing. That is why we need to end childhood hunger but not forget that we have high expectations for the parenting that our parents are asked to give. Everybody, every single one of us, needs some basic needs met to live a human life. We're lucky to live in a state like Montana, where the Montana Constitution established a right to clean and a healthful environment. I'm grateful to the folks that created the Constitution with that element in there. But shelter and food, they aren't in our Constitution. I'm a person that at this point in my life, I do believe that food is a basic human right, and we have a long way to go to get to meeting that in our community and in our world. I think that shelter is one of the unknown major challenges facing so many low-income people in our community. I know that healthy food matters to me, to my family, and I suspect it matters to all of you, and it matters to the folks served at Helena Foodshare. Families that happen to not have a lot of money right now are no different than you and I. I got to watch a wonderful mom with two charming daughters uh, walking through the pantry, and the entire time that they were in the pantry, the girls were going, Mom, can't we have some donuts, please? Please, how about a cake? How about a cake? It's a beautiful one. We could have that. And the mother just simply kept quietly repeating, as we hope all mothers do, I'm sorry, that's not what we're getting today. I'm sorry, we're not getting that today. No, you cannot have any of that. So making sure that her children did not have too much sugar in their diets. When she knew it was free food that would help fill their bellies, she still drew that line. Food insecurity is what you call many people that do not have enough food. They have food, they are food insecure families. Here's a short definition of that. Food insecurity is the state of being without reliable access to a sufficient quantity of affordable, nutritious food. It's not a lot. It is sufficient, adequate. Note that they're not talking big words in this. And I know there are many people in our community who do not know 
where their next meal is coming from. I know that there were times when I might not have had a lot of money. Yep, just out of college I lived on eggs, bread, and head lettuce. Okay, not perfect, but it worked for me and I happen to love all of them then. Don't love those foods now. And many people do crazy things to try and get through difficult economic times. But there are many in our community who have gone through that stage and are still not out of that economic challenge. And now they don't know where their next meal is coming from. Who are these families that end up there? They are families that have resulted in us having one out of five children in our community who are food insecure. That's more than an entire grade school here in our community. That's a lot of kids. I know that being hungry carries with it major stress. The adults that I know that were hungry as children and are no longer hungry, we have folks in our town that are wonderful professionals doing very well, they make sure that there is food in their basement so that they never again have to be in the situation that one out of five of our children are, where they do not know where there's going to be any food next. That stress is incredibly taxing. Many of these kids are in families where there is this stigma. It is considered shameful by many people in our community if they ask for help. It's part of why I so admired that 11-year-old girl and her courage in asking for help. They feel that we, as the community, will think less of them if they ask for help. It can be a single dad with kids who needs to ask for help. There is a guy in town working full time, single dad, three kids, ran into medical bills, paid his bills, didn't have any money for food, pretty common. It took this hardworking guy 45 minutes of sitting in his truck outside of the food share pantry to walk in that door, 45 minutes, torturing himself because he thought he would be considered less of a person if he asked for help to feed his kids. Honest to gosh, he made it in and his kids had a good meal that night. But that was really hard. He too was very brave. It can be a two-parent household. We have households in our communities that look absolutely model. There was one mom years ago who came up to me and said, you know, my son doesn't know that we're poor. And I respect her for that. She wanted to be sure that he was raised to know that he could do anything and that he didn't have to worry about money. She was one of those mothers with that drawn look so often, and I knew that she had not been eating. There was a family that I met. I met the father of the family, six kids, blended family. He worked full-time, she worked part-time, and he had an experience that I would never wish on anyone. The night before I met him, he, went to, he w was lying in bed and listened while his three-year-old cried herself to sleep because she was hungry. There was absolutely nothing he could do. And he had to listen to his child cry herself to sleep. So it didn't surprise me when he came into Helena Fuchero and was a bit crabby. He hadn't eaten either. And he was a bit crabby because we didn't have apples. I found a few pieces of produce for him. And then I learned his story. I would be crabby too if I had had to listen to a child cry themselves to sleep with hunger. We also have quite a few grandparents or older adults raising children. Imagine thinking you've got your life set, you're on a fixed income, but you know you can make this work and suddenly you have the kids. How do you not only get them everywhere they need to go, but clothe them and feed them? At least grandparents often have housing taken care of, and that's pretty big. The cost of housing can be astronomical in our community. There is a local group called the Kids Hunger Coalition that has been working for the last two years together, a very large coalition of people in our community, trying to look at where are the gaps, what are the challenges that we face. And this slide, to me, told a lot of the story. This was fifth graders uh, in the Helena district, and we simply asked them that one question, which meals do you eat each day? Take a look at the difference between lunch and breakfast or dinner. School lunches matter immensely. Both Helena and East Helena have the privilege of having incredible staff working to ensure that we have good nutritious food available to all our kids.
But through working with the Kids Hunger Coalition, I've just learned a new question that I want to share with you. I know how hard our teachers work and I have immense respect for our teachers and our school districts. How can we support our teachers and give our elementary students more than 15 to 20 minutes for their lunch break. An elementary student has to get into the lunch area, get their trays, get their food, sit down, eat. Their kids, they're going to talk with their friends, right? Get up, get their tray put back. Often they throw away food because they ran out of time or they didn't like it, of course, their kids. 15 to 20 minutes. I know it takes me at least 20 minutes to eat a meal that's plated and put in front of me. We ask a lot of our staff at schools and a lot of our kids. How do we keep this most important meal of the day in the kids and not in the garbage? Helena Foodshare plays an important role in this particular process through our Kid Packs program. The Kid Packs program just started in 2009. We provide uh, month, what, nine meals but that we call our monthly grocery program to about 1,500 households. In those households, there are anywhere between 800 and 1,100 kids each month, different families, different months. Our Kid Packs program came along because we learned from school staff that many of our kids were coming in on Mondays and not able to focus on school because they were too hungry. And when you are hungry, there's only one thing in your mind. You're waiting for your next meal. Those are those food insecure families that just are focused on getting a meal. An adult at work is an accident waiting to happen if they have not eaten for a couple of days. So kid packs play a role and our schools play a role. And we too all as community members have a role to play. Denise Juno spoke about those kids that are most in need. Denise Juno is the Montana superintendent of schools. For some kids, school is the only place where they get a hot meal and a warm hug. There are kids in our school districts and in our communities who truly need schools as their core base. And lunch is the key meal that's provided there. I also know that so many of the families that are served by Helena Food Share's Kid Pack program love their kids, do everything they can, but are unable to have enough cash like that dad of six to actually get enough food to their kids. They so want to. One of the benefits available to folks is SNAP, Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program. And across the country, you can see through this slide from FRAC um, how much growth there has been in the SNAP program over time. The SNAP program was designed to grow with the need. The folks that are receiving SNAP are the same folks that would have qualified 10 years ago. This is not some kind of grab game. These are folks that need assistance. But why, does places like, why do places like Helena Food Share have folks receiving SNAP and coming in? Here's part of it. If you are getting, if you're a single person with kids, your take home on a monthly basis, this is an average. If you're working at a minimum wage job, 1,071 take home for the month. Housing in our area is very expensive. The median cost for a two bedroom apartment, 649. If you add in there the very important piece in Montana of transportation, we have to be able to get from where we are to where our kids need to be and where we need to be to work. We have to be able to get to services like hospitals, pharmacies, grocery stores. If a car breaks down and you live outside the immediacy of town, you've got a real challenge. There are many people working on our busing system, but transportation is a cost that must be figured in. I have met too many people that have lost jobs because their car broke down and they could not get to work. They lost their job. It only compounds the situation when people do not have the transportation they need. So if you've got all of those expenses, how do you cover the rest of it? Where do you find the cash that you need? The SNAP program is a challenge because it is based at the federal level on what they call the thrifty meal plan. There are a number of different meal plans up to liberal. 
the uh, SNAP program is based on Thrifty. And if you take a look at that, where that red arrow is pointing, if you have a family of four and the children are between the ages of two and five, four a week, what you will get for that family of four is 151, is, sorry, $131.80 for the week. If your kids are a little bit older, six to 11, you'll get 15160 but what's most telling to me is the per meal cost. That same family of four with children between the ages of two and five, per meal, $6.27. Now I know I can do that sometimes. Could you do that month after month? And have healthy children and be healthy yourself. That kind of meal plan is not going to include very many fresh vegetables, very much fruit. It's going to include food that is not healthy because it's cheap. I never want someone to go to bed listening to a child cry of hunger. Neither does any parent. So they're going to buy food that is not expensive so that that child does not feel hungry, even if the parent knows that I wish I could have given them something other than donuts for dinner. But that's what I could get. Having compassion for these parents who are trying so hard is really one of the gifts that we can give them. Locally, um, Montana Food Bank Network tracks data across the state every year. In their 2014 uh, client hunger survey, they are showing that we are seeing some improvement in the number of people coming to food pantries and food banks across our state. I'm choosing to look at it as improvement. One could also say, hmm, could they just not get there because transportation was a bigger issue? I do not know that. But it is wonderful to see a little bit of change, but note that we've had a little bit of change before and climbed right back up. And the sad part is how many people this represents. Back in the 70s, we had the war on poverty. We have lost that war. We are in much worse shape across this country than we were in the 70s. I know that in a rural state like Montana, some of the challenge faced across this great state of ours is again that issue of transportation. We have many areas in our state that are called the food desert in the national lingo. It can be over an hour to a grocery store. What you have access to are gas station foods. So when you are pressed to have enough gas or you are pressed to just get a ride with somebody to get you something, you're not getting the most nutritious food that we would like to see all of our families in Montana have. There are many people in our state that are working on this issue. You have local entities like FoodShare, you have state level groups like the Office of Public Instruction, Montana No Kid Hungry, the SNAP groups that are working across the state, and I'm honored that we have strong support on hunger issues from our governor and his wife. This makes a difference to have strong leadership and so many people thanks to the hearts of Montanans that care about making a difference to our youngest citizens. Why are we talking about this gigantic issue? It feels way too big. But I know, and I know that you know, that we can, each of us, working as a single person, make a difference. There are many things that we can do, and you don't have to have a title. You have to have a heart that wants to work and make a difference. As always, one of the things you can do to help move any cause forward is donate your funding. Help your hard-earned dollars make a difference for those who do not have those dollars. I've often used the image of a bow tie. Places like Helena Foodshare are just the center little knot in those old-fashioned bow ties. The people in our community that can help help get food and funding into that little center spot. Foodshare just rearranges it, and then we get that out to the part of the community that that day cannot help, and they need us to get them through. I know also that many of our strongest donors are folks that at one point in their past went to a food bank, a food pantry, or at times to Helena Foodshare. If you have been there, you know how critical it is. Donations of food. Food matters. It's a great way to train your children that donating matters. It's a very tangible gift. And I count on our community to give us all that really good food. 
There's a lot of ways to donate food through gardens, at food drives, at grocery stores. Um, there's so many different ways you can do it. Donating your time. Helena Foodshare would not be able to do what it does without the almost 1,000 volunteers every year that donate over 1,200, almost 1,500 hours some months. A huge effort by this community, and that effort is replicated in so many towns across our great state. We, as agencies, need you. We cannot do the work that we're trying to do without you. And the final idea of how you can help is join the idea team. Imagine, what do you see? What can you research on the web? Can you call someone and say, have you guys ever thought of this? Yes, you might sometimes hear, we thought of that, it didn't work. But keep thinking, share your ideas, who knows? There may be an 11-year-old out there that has the perfect answer. That 11-year-old inspired me immensely. She was brave, she was courageous, she stepped up. And that's what we all need to do. You don't have to be a named entity in order to make a difference. I have seen volunteers at Helena Foodshare who are just like us, make a huge difference in the day of somebody who came in for food. They gave them a hug, they gave them hope, and yes, they got to walk out with food. I do absolutely believe that Together, not alone, together, we can create a hunger-free community. Will you join that 11-year-old and me in asking the hard questions so that we can end childhood hunger for good? Thank you.